Hi, this is David Staples. Uh, as most of you probably know by now, you've probably seen some of my other videos. Uh, I'm an IT and project management instructor here in Atlanta. And today I'm coming to you to talk about the CompTIA Network Plus exam. Uh, so the current revision of this exam is the N10-006, uh, N10-006. Uh, the previous version was the 005. Uh, but let's talk about the exam a little bit. I know that I've got a lot of students that come into the class and they know nothing about the actual exam format or the types of questions that are going to be on it, uh, what the passing score is, so, so let's talk about those. Uh, so this exam was actually launched in February of 2015. Uh, of course, the previous version, the 005, was the active one before that. Uh, this covers all sorts of different types of networking topics. Uh, the objectives are actually on CompTIA's website, uh, and if you've got any sort of study materials or coursewares, uh, especially if you're taking a course with me. Uh, I know that the book has the objectives actually in the back of the books that we use. Uh, so you can go through there and see the actual topics that are on the exam. Uh, things like IP addressing both with IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, subnetting, we talk about some security concepts. Uh, we talk about routing and switching a little bit. Uh, you know, of course not too terribly much detail uh, because the Network Plus is a foundational level exam. Uh, this is not meant to be your CCNA, this is not meant to be the CCIE, the CCNP, or anything like that. Uh, this is basically just foundational level concepts of networking. Uh, so I've had some people come back and say, you know, man, that was a tough exam. Uh, some of the questions can be a little bit tricky, uh, but again, networking does get rather complex. So uh, if, if you think this is difficult, it might be best to you know, make sure that you've got your A plus first. Uh, you know, go through some of the, the basic hardware and, and learn you know, some of the underlying concepts before you get into the Network Plus. Uh, but let's talk about the exam here. So uh, there is a maximum of 90 questions on the exam. Uh, I have heard of people in different instances of having a few more questions than that. Uh, we can only assume that those questions are seated questions. Uh, sometimes uh, Microsoft and CompTIA and uh, other organizations will throw uh, basically sample questions on there to see how people do. Uh, they don't actually count towards the final score, uh, but they're basically testing them to see if they want to use these questions on a future exam to actually count for real credit. Uh, I know that one of my previous tests, I think it was, it had said a maximum of 80 questions, and I had 83 questions on there. Uh, so, of course, how that works, we can only assume that those extra three, or possibly even more than that, were just seated questions uh, that they were testing to see whether or not they wanted to actually use those in the real exams for other people later as scored questions. Uh, so what type of questions will you actually see on the exam? Uh, you'll see a few different types. You're going to see the single response where, of course, you choose you know, A, B, C, or D, uh, maybe A, B, C, D, or E, perhaps. Uh, but you'll also see some multiple response questions as well. So it might tell you to choose two or choose three. Uh, so those, of course, are our multiple response type questions. Uh, you might have some drag and drops where on one side of the screen you'll actually have a list of uh, different things that you can choose from and over on the other side of the screen you'll actually basically drag those options over uh, to the other side uh, to choose those particular uh, options. Uh, there are also what we call some performance based questions on the exam as well. Uh, they're not exactly a simulation uh, because it doesn't actually have you working in Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 10 or anything uh, and it doesn't really have you working on an actual uh, router interface like a, a consumer wireless router interface uh, but there are some that uh, basically are designed to look something kind of similar to what you might see in a, a sample firewall configuration, uh, you know, just kind of a, a very generic type interface. Uh, so you do want to make sure that you're aware of the, the types of uh, simulations that are on there as well. Um, you know, it might have some things where you actually have to click on a, a computer and, and look at the configuration. Uh, it might have a kind of simulated command prompt where you might have to type in a couple of commands. Uh, you just never really quite know what types of, of things are there. And, and it will accept you know, certain uh, commands in there, but of course, if it is something that you type in, you do want to make sure that everything is spelled exactly correctly with those command names, uh, that IP addresses are exactly what they should be. Uh, you know, don't assume that anything on the exam is a typo. Uh, always make sure that you're carefully reading every question uh, for you know, accuracy and for correctness, because uh, of course that's how they're scoring this. This is not a uh, a kindergarten exam where maybe a, a kindergarten teacher forgot to leave a, a put a word in there or they uh, left a word out or something like that. So, uh, so the passing score. Uh, this is actually scored on a scale of 100 to 900 and the passing score for this is going to be a 720. Uh, now of course with some of those multiple answer options where you can actually select multiples, choose two, choose three or whatever, uh, I haven't seen any sort of confirmation from CompTIA. Uh, or anyone else as far as what the actual policy is, uh, but those could actually be partial credit for you. 
we don't know. Uh, CompTIA does try and keep some things close to the vest when it comes to how they actually score the exams. Uh, so you definitely want to make sure that you're, you've answered every question uh, to the best of your ability. Uh, now, with these 90 questions that they give you, or up to 90 questions, again, it says maximum, so you could have 70-something, you could have 80-something, uh, you could have 60-something, we just don't know. Uh, but with this maximum 90 questions, you do have up to 90 minutes to take those questions. Uh, you will have a little bit of extra time at the end to go through and fill out the survey. You'll have a little bit of extra time at the beginning uh, to actually start the exam. You have to read through all of the uh, things with the agreement first, and it will tell you basically your exam is about to start before you actually get started with the, the exam. Uh, so CompTIA recommends before you come into this certification that you do have at least nine months of networking experience and perhaps your CompTIA a certification. Now, if you've been doing networking for quite some time and you just decided to go ahead and skip the A+, totally fine too. But if you are fairly new to the networking world, you really aren't familiar with IP addressing, uh, you're not familiar with subnetting, uh, it might be a good idea to go get your CompTIA A+, first. Uh, so this exam is available in three different languages according to the CompTIA website. Uh, they're saying that it's available in English, Japanese, and German. Uh, and they're saying the current price right now is $285. Uh, of course, that's always subject to change, uh, so you, know, you might want to go ahead and take it before the price goes up. Sometimes they do go up at the beginning of the next year. Um, and as well, there are places out there where you can get discount exam vouchers as well. Uh, I know that uh, I've got a couple of good sources for those. Uh, I'm not going to share them right here in the video in case those do change over time, but uh, if you'd like to leave a, uh, a message in the comments with perhaps uh, some contact information or uh, you want to shoot me an email, uh, my email address uh, is david at cheapquiz.com and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions you've got. So I hope you click on subscribe at the top left hand corner of this video. Uh, as well I'll put up a couple of other videos I think you might enjoy here uh, in the end credits. So I uh, hope you guys are doing well. Take care and I look forward to seeing you in a future video or maybe in class. Take care guys.